<laughs> so it actually works. Yes. Hmm. This is not fair. What would you like to say to the people? Sorry, what was that, Bindi? <laughs> She's not gonna move now. We're gonna be doing something slightly different and something that we've kind of planned for a while. We're gonna be hiring a part-time video editor to edit the videos for Mainbyte and Gear Seeker Shorts. However, they're not gonna to have to be in our house to edit. Now this idea was inspired by Craft Computing. Go and sub to Craft Computing. He set up a Parsec gaming setup where multiple people could log in and play on his server but we're gonna be doing the same thing. However, for video editing. And I haven't really seen anyone do this before, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, come with me, uh, we're gonna talk about the hardware and stuff. Don't mind the studio. The studio is in a bit of a mess at the moment because we're in the process of building out some new camera storage and stuff, so everything's just a complete schmozzle at the moment. But yeah, I'm gonna show you guys all the hardware. We're gonna chuck this whole system together and do a kind of vloggy build thing, just something a little bit different, just to show you guys, you know, what we're up to. Also, this is probably gonna be a multi-part series, so I'm gonna try and put the system together, set it up today, maybe play around with testing it a bit. We still need to buy some extra hardware for it because we don't have everything, so we need a 10 gig ethernet adapter for this because we don't, we haven't really picked a board that can do it at the moment. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly show you the hardware while I've got Claire on the gimbal so she doesn't run away and not want to film on the gimbal. All right, so for hardware, come here, Claire. Come here, my lovely wife. I'm gonna show these people what we picked. Okay, for the GPU, I picked a 2070 Super. This actually came out of my old editing PC that I had like built last year. I kind of wanted to repurpose it. I didn't want to get rid of it. I knew that this day would eventually come where we're actually like looking at doing this kind of thing. So that's what 2070 Super. For the motherboard, I went with the B550 Aorus Pro. The reason why is because I haven't really used this motherboard at all for anything. So if we put it in a PC for like a server type of system, we're not gonna really miss it that much. So yeah, we're gonna go for that. For RAM, I had, I forgot that we had this. We have two 16 gig sticks of Corsair Vengeance at 3000 megahertz, not the fastest memory, not really that important for this system, but the pizza of resistance is the CPU uh, 3900 XT. The reason for this chip over any other chip is it's 12 core, it's relatively fast, but we've used it about three times in videos. And I forgot that we had this CPU so we're gonna put it to good use. And to cool it, this box is in a bit of a mess. Shadow Rock 3 from Be Quiet. Now, this is probably going to be temporary because the idea is we're gonna water cool this whole system eventually. Not right now, because this whole system is going to be rack mounted when we eventually move house. So. The way we're gonna do it is we're gonna pick a, a relatively small case to jam all this gear into, and when we move house, I don't know when that's gonna happen, we're gonna, we've got a bunch of other servers and stuff that are sitting in a cupboard that are all powered on, but they're not rack mounted, so we want this for when we move to slide into the rack and be ready to go. So yeah, let's uh, pick a case and kind of find out <laughs> what else we're gonna do. This is kind of an idea I came up with in the shower this morning, just after thinking about how we could actually pull this off and Parsec seemed to be the only way that we could get this to work. So let's go and find a case. We're going to Scorp Tech to pick up that 10 gig ethernet card. I, I don't know why, I just kind of changed the plan. I was going to order it online, but I kind of want to get them, like most of these systems, sorted out as soon as possible, just so we can use the thing and I can get it all tested up. And look at this guy up here, Claire. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> doing? Look, Claire, Scorp Tech, okay. computer shop. You ready to go inside to pick up the stuff? Look at this. Gearseek is using a phone to film, Claire. 
What do you reckon, Claire? Look, there's Claire's feet. She's in the video. This is the last piece of the puzzle, ladies and gents. This 10 gig nick. I'll explain why we need this when I'm in the car and driving. But yeah, this is the actual adapter that we ended up picking. All right, so the reason why we got a 10 gig nick for this, and I didn't really explain this earlier in the video, and excuse me if I'm not staring at the camera, it's because I'm trying to keep my eyes on the road, is we need the 10 gig nick to connect the actual like computer to our 10 gig area of our network, which is dedicated to all of the things that require fast storage. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be basically ingesting all the footage to really high speed network storage. And then whoever's editing will be able to pull that footage into their project and not have to worry about like actually getting the footage to be able to edit. So that's that's the main idea. I, I, I think that's a pretty elegant way of doing it without having to like physically drop the files on that machine every day. So all we would do is one, when we're finished shooting or we're sh finished shooting a section of video or whatever, we ingest the footage into the network and then it's just there available for them to use. And that way like the only experience that's being pushed out over the internet is parsec itself pushing the screen across the internet so all the processing and everything it's been doing locally that way we don't have to like create proxies for all the files and send like proxies and all that kind of stuff it's just a complete waste of time this is the fastest way of doing it anyways it's time to go back to the studio i guess well it's actually our house but yeah let's let's actually start building this thing now that we've got the final part to the puzzle all right we just got back from picking up this 10 gig tp link nick Never used it before, don't know if it's gonna work, but as I mentioned in the car, yeah, it's for connecting to our high speed 10 gig VLAN for storage stuff only. So this connection like on our network doesn't get any internet, it's just for storage, which is why we need onboard NIC as well on the motherboard. But anyway, let's talk about the case. Deep Cool CL500, you might remember this one. This is the one that I modded to work with EATX motherboards. Actually, the story goes that I, cleaned it up after the video. We got a little Benny. Hello, Benny. Hey, baby. Don't you do it. Bye. Don't you be cute. She's like making all the cat sounds. Anyway, yeah, so I actually cleaned this up, redid the whole thing, made the grommet way bigger. So this is a new and improved version that I never talked about on the channel of the mod that I did for the CL500. So without further ado, it's finally time to put this thing together and see if this crazy idea that I've got actually works. Well, we're gonna see if it works in the way that it's gonna work on our local network now that I'm gonna play around and test it. So do you think it's gonna work, Claire? Yeah. I think it's gonna work. Claire's did arm day today. I hate you. You're doing pretty good. <laughs> this is not fair. Let's start off with the CPU socketing. Guys, I did an AMD AM4 CPU socket installation guide already. If you wanna check that out, it's in the top right hand corner right now. And this will show you how to install it, but I'm just gonna show you again. Look, look how easy that was. All done, right? A matter of one and a half seconds. Oh, I didn't talk about this, the M.2. Now, it's not super important what we use for local storage, but I'm just going with this because also, again, I don't really use it. It's RGB, but whatever, I don't use it. So it's not like I chose it to look good. I basically just chose this because it was there. So we'll just drop that M.2 on real quick. Let's see how quickly we can do this, right? Very, very quickly. And if I'm looking at the camera, the camera will tell me how long it took me to do this part. And it was 58 seconds to do CPU, M.2 and RAM. And this just goes to show that you could do it that quickly as well. But now we've got to install the cooler, right? Okay, let's do this thing. Fully done, including cooler installation in six minutes. It's only taken most of the day to get to this point. I'm gonna walk you guys through this while I'm doing this. You might find this interesting, maybe not. The CL500 is a really nice case. I'm a big fan of it. And I, I felt like when I was trying, sorry, mind the noise. When I was trying to pick out 
a case for this to like for us to use this just seems like the right one because it's got like a built-in fan controller uh, it's got my ghetto EATX mod so if we ever wanted to change motherboards before we rack this uh, we can go bigger which is nice but yeah it's just an all-round nice case nice airflow looks pretty good too it's gonna sit in a really unassuming part of my office because I have a space in my office where this can drop in and get access to both networks. So it shouldn't be an issue at all. It's just a bit dusty because it's been sitting in our storage for months and months and months. So yeah, so I'm gonna just, we're gonna build it. It's gonna be super quick. But I think what I wanna start off with doing is putting the power supply in and routing those cables. Since we're not doing anything fancy with any sleeving on or whatnot, I don't think, yeah, we'll, we'll just do the power supply first. It's gonna be faster. Think of this video as an impromptu build guide. I'll try and narrate as much as possible to help people who've never built PCs before. I wouldn't usually do a video like this, but today I just feel like hanging out with you guys while we plan for some much bigger uh, gear shifts for gear seekers. The order for building this one is quite different. I'm starting off with the power supply, whereas I wouldn't usually start off with this, but because of the way that this system is going to be without sleeved cables. I think it's probably easier for me to start off here. So power supply insulations are quite easy. It's all dependent on the case. This one, for instance, loads in through the back side, which is the most typical way that power supplies go in for those out there who've never built a PC before and may have stumbled across this video of me building a PC. Now I'm going to route the main power cable. So I'm going to use the CPU, the EPS power connector. I'm going to put that through first because with the air cooler, it might be difficult to plug in. Uh, we'll just run this one to here. That's about where the, the actual 24 pin power connector goes. And GPU power, let's just run that with that as well. I'm going to use zip ties to clean all this up so it's nice and clean. But yeah, let's just jam that in there like that. Use the built-in cable tie downs to make it clean for continuing to install. We're gonna come back and clean all this up, but I just wanted to show you that stuff quickly. Uh, I will be plugging in the USB and whatnot. I don't think this board has USB type C, which is fine, it's no big deal. Front panel audio connector, I'm not gonna be plugging these in. So USB type C and front panel audio. I'm just gonna hide these in the bottom. We still need to go and find some fans for this as well. So USB 3.0 and the lights and switches, we will be plugging those in. So yeah, I'll just uh, leave those free for when I need to plug those in and route them, but I won't be talking really about that in this video. Here's why I routed the power supply cables first. Sometimes with big air coolers, it's hard to plug in the EPS power connector on the top of the board. So sometimes I recommend routing the cable first, plugging it into the motherboard, and then securing the motherboard to the actual case itself. That is, uh, yeah, usually what I do with big air coolers. It saves myself a headache, it saves some time, and you know, I, I'd rather not cry trying to get my massive sausage fingers in all kinds of places to try and make stuff fit. That sounds really rude when I say it like that, doesn't it? Yep. You heard me, that's what I'm doing. Being rude as usual. This cooler just fits in here. So if you're wanting to know about air cooler clearance in here, yeah, this one is right on the limit. This one will be sitting basically up against the glass, give or take a couple mil. Okay, two screws. Here we go, here we go. Okay, we'll screw that one in. Splendid. Right, now the network card, I think we'll put it in the right in the bottom slot. It needs a by four slot and there's a by four slot right down the bottom on this motherboard, so we'll just dump it in there. It look It's so odd to install more than one interface card in a PC in 2021. Most machines will just, you know, have a GPU and that's it. But I, as I mentioned, like we need to have this 10 gig 
interface for connecting to our high-speed storage. All right, I'm just gonna fill it up with a stack of just random fans now. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna speed this up because there's six fans to chuck in. Legit, they're just gonna be the most random fans you can imagine. management time. This isn't a cable management guide. This is just a quick and dirty uh, cable management setup. I, I'll probably end up speeding up most of this, but yeah, I'm going to make this as clean and as accessible as possible. So I've got to get rid of like some of these cables. A lot of the time, the, the main trick to cable management is, is getting all of the small stuff down first. So like, all of the small fan cables and whatnot underneath everything and then you put all the big stuff on top because then it pushes everything down and hides it all and pushes it down so it's nice and clean. All right, it's time to see if this actually works. Follow me, ladies and gentlemen, giving Claire a good workout on the gimbal today, to the office, via the kitchen, via the bad place. Here we go. And this is where I usually do all of the things when I'm building and testing and doing all the stuff. So I'm gonna skip the boring part of installing windows and all that stuff and We'll sit down and get Parsec up and running and we'll see if this whole idea actually works. I've got the Parsec client installed on this machine here. This is the my normal editing machine. I just wanna show you guys how this actually works. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna download Parsec together on the machine that we're using to host a video editing. And since this is the one that we just built, so we'll just download the Parsec client. It's kind of, it's kind of like a client. Uh, it's a server and a client application. Basically what you do, I'm gonna show you this, it's really easy. We'll just log in. It's going to show the computers that are connected. Now that we've got the two machines on the network that are running Parsec, you can see that it's showing my editing PC and it's showing this computer that I'm on, it's called Junin. It's another Final Fantasy name. It's something that I, I always do. If I hit share, it generates a link for us to be able to share this PC. Now this shareable link allows you to then open a connection to this PC on any web browser without installing the Parsec client. So let's say for instance, I had a, an editor that I wanted to send this link to. So I'd send them an email, especially if it's someone that is like just contracting, I can send them the link and they can connect straight to that either using the Parsec client or by using Parsec inside a web browser. So that's what's really great about this. It's, you can use it in any way you like. As long as you've got an internet connection, you're good to go. So let's jump over to the other PC. I'm gonna connect to this PC, the one that we just built on this PC over here. Now that Parsec is running on the host machine, I'm gonna show you how to run it as a client. So what we're gonna do is you can just hit connect. This is the machine right here, connect. Uh, so, I mean, just give it a sec for the desktop to catch up with resolution. You've got some options here. You can choose the codec. Uh, you can say like prefer H.265, we'll chuck that on. The decoder, we use NVIDIA as the decoder. We can also use that as the encode on the other side too. Resolution, you can use the client resolution. The issue here is mainly to do with uh, me being on an ultra wide monitor as opposed to like a 16 by nine monitor. We've we'll also got your bandwidth selection here. And just to show you, let's just take a look at 
the system spec. So this is the machine that we did build. Ryzen 9 3900 XT 12 core, 32 gigs of RAM at 3000 megahertz. Yeah, this is the system here. Uh, you can see RTX 2070 Super. If we open up these here, this drive is quite full. This is the one we're actually moving away from. And this is the, the new high speed 10 gig storage. I've actually put the benchmark project on the new storage. So we'll just go benchmark, open the benchmark project in Premiere Pro, hit OK, locating media, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Let's close this stupid panel and with any luck, we should be able to scrub pretty perfectly in Premiere across the network using Parsec. So this is actually, this is actually not too bad. We're, we're viewing this at half resolution. Let's just bump it up to full resolution because this machine will be able to do it no problem. But as you can see here, right, this is running so nice. And this is me like literally scrubbing the timeline remotely it works! It works! It actually works! Yes! This is sweet! This just opens up like a whole different level of things we can do now! It actually worked! Sweet! I'm chuffed! This whole day of work and this thing works absolutely flawlessly. Not only is it working flawlessly, it's connected to network storage with Blackmagic RAW with 8 to 1 compression and it's still playing back perfectly. I'm so happy that we got this to work. And this is where we're gonna end the video, guys. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. If you like the music you heard here, yeah, uh, it's on Patreon. You wanna get early access to videos like this on, head on over to Flowplan. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. I'm so chuffed that this actually worked. Oh, all right. Part two is coming really soon and we're gonna show the whole network set up and then we're gonna to go to one of our friend's houses, install Parsec on his computer and then we're gonna edit remotely to test it out. Thanks for watching. <laughs>